Good morning, and welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Mark Graham, serving as interim pastor. It is my hope that wherever you are worshiping and connecting with our service today, at home or here, that you will sense the Holy Spirit moving in your heart. And you will hear the good news of Jesus Christ who is here, who is, is present wherever you are, to reassure you that God loves you and will be with you always. Here are the announcements for this this week. The ladies' Bible study will be on hiatus until January 25th. Teresa Yarger, you can contact her for any questions you have. The Church Administrative Council will be meeting tomorrow evening uh, at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. There, there will be no coffee fellowship time today, unfortunately. You are welcome to come and fellowship with others, but we do ask you to please observe social distancing and masking guidelines while, while being there. There, are, there will be a prayer meeting on Saturday, January 22nd, at 2 p.m. at the House of Prayer. And all who are welcome, uh, you know, all who are interested are welcome to attend, and you can contact Teresa Yarger with questions. The missions team will meet on Thursday, January 20th, in the Jonah Room, and please contact Anna Young with any questions. Let us focus this precious time on God to see what God has to say to us today as we enter into this time of worship. I invite you to stand as you are able for our call to worship. In the kingdom of God, no one is beneath you. We are one in Jesus Christ. In the kingdom of God, the Holy Spirit gives gifts to all for the benefit of all. We are one in Jesus Christ. The gifts and skills God has given you are important for building the kingdom of God. We are one in Jesus Christ. Let us use our gifts. Let us pour out our lives to do the work God calls us to do. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts you give us. Use us, Lord, for your glory to make your kingdom real in our corner of the world. Amen. Go. Can you hear me? Take my muffle off. Good morning, everyone. Let us go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Dear Holy Father, we just love you so much, and we thank you for this beautiful day. We always thank you for the days that you have given us, for you are with us always, no matter where we are. God of all good gifts, we thank you and we praise you for this morning especially, for we will hear your message and know that your spirit is with us. Your spirit has touched our lives, bringing wisdom, ability, strength, courage, and passion. Enable us, Lord, to use our gifts in service to you and to others. In all that we do and in all that we are, may your name be glorified that your kingdom will be with us and reside here on this earth. We pray this in the name of your Holy Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join in singing the first hymn, 128, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. Whatever I do, where I 
that leadeth me. As we offer our gifts to God, let us join together in the offertory prayer. Generous God, we are reminded through Scripture of the spiritual gifts that you give. We know that these are not for us to hold on to, but are gifts for us to share, gifts for you meant for giving. As we offer our tithes and offerings, prompt us to commit more than dollars, but to see the gifts you have written on our hearts and to share generously of these as well. We pray these words in the name of Jesus and whose way we follow, for whose love we are eternally grateful. Amen. Morning. This morning's scripture reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Paul is discussing the spiritual gifts with those in Corinth. Paul says, Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray by mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is cursed, and no one who says Jesus is Lord except by that same Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of services, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one it is the same God at work. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given by the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge by the means of that same Spirit. In another faith by that same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. To another distinguishing between Spirits to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of those tongues. All these are the works of the one and the same Spirit, and he distributes to each one just as he is determined. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In 2012, 
A subatomic particle known as Higgs boson was observed by physicists for the very first time in the CERN's Hadron Collider in Switzerland. Now, before I get too deep in the science weeds here, I, wa I want you to know this. Higgs boson is the particle that creates mass, that brings together all other particles that make cells, cells that make multicelled organisms, tissues, organs, bodies, living beings, including us. And Higgs boson is the particle and the force that makes it possible for mass to exist. Now, I still believe that God is the one behind it all. God is the creator of all things, including physics. And in discoveries like this, we get to see behind the curtain to the deep mysteries of God, to see the bridge between scientific discovery and spiritual knowledge. The miracle that we experience with every movement, with every breath, is that God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, has created the force that holds us together and makes it possible for every atom, for every cell in us to cooperate with each other and bring unity to our bodies. And God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, creates the force that brings us together to cooper cooperate with each other to be the body of Christ. God is intertwined with every cell in us, and God is intertwined with every one of us in our diversity as individuals to bring unity to the body of Christ. Now let's listen again to just a few of the scriptures from, from today, from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. In the time that you've been around the church, you surely have noticed that there's a great diversity in how people live their faith and, and how they express their faith. We have doers that love the hands-on that will help set up or tear down everything that's needed for vacation Bible school or the Bethlehem marketplace or others who have skills to work on crafts to raise money for missions like M&Ms. We have those that have leadership skills and administrative skills to organize and make decisions and bring people together for meetings and thank God that we have those people in place that take on those responsibilities in the church. We have others that have, are gifted to pray, to lead Bible studies and Sunday school classes, to teach about faith in Jesus Christ and pass on the faith to the next generation. We have others who are gifted encouragers who can write notes and can make phone calls and keep people connected within the church. We have those who serve by just being there, being there to listen, being there to support people during some of their hardest days. We have others who put the lion's share of their faith commitment to work in the place where they work, in their employment, out in the community, where they live, with their families. And it's all good. It's all needed. It's the same spirit that's behind all these gifts and skills that people use to express their faith. And the same spirit that distributes them all. People serve in many different ways, but it's the same Lord. People are so different in what they do. But in everyone, it is the same God at work. John Wesley, one of the founders of the United Methodist Church, movement adopted this belief from the Moravian church in essentials unity in non-essentials liberty in all things love what this says to me is that unity is found in our faith in Jesus Christ to 
died for the forgiveness of our sins and rose from the dead and lives today so that we can live abundantly now. And one day when we take our final breath, that we can live with God forever. This is essential. This is our identity as followers of Jesus. But with the non-essentials, there's liberty. There's diversity. We're not all the same. We can learn from each other and, and grow from our connection with each other. And it is in following Jesus together that there is love. Love for God, love for one another, love for stranger, love for enemy. In all things, love. There's an old camp song that explains the idea of unity and diversity. And I think I might have learned it from Martin Gutzmer back in our church camp days, or maybe from his kids when they were teenagers. The chorus goes like this. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing higher. Some sing out loud on a telephone wire. And some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. Now, I didn't know way back then uh, that this, how profound this camp song was. It was just silly, I thought, but really the message is great. We're all different. We're all one. And we all belong. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. The Scripture says, Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between Spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And the Spirit distributes them to each one just as the Spirit determines. Now, I would like to think that we are all of one mind when it comes to the Holy Spirit. However, it seems that there are points of disagreement and division when it comes to experiences of the Holy Spirit. It goes all the way back to the early church And it is evident in this scripture that was part of a letter to the church in Corinth from the Apostle Paul who started this church that this is what was going on. There was division. Some people thought that their gift of the Holy Spirit was the most important one, the gift of speaking in tongues, in languages you never learned. Some thought that if you spoke in tongues, well, this was the sign that you had faith in Christ, that you believed, and that you were going to be saved. They, they sort of dismissed everyone else, that if you didn't speak in tongues, well, maybe you didn't believe or didn't, didn't have enough faith. The Apostle Paul explains in these verses that the Holy Spirit is generous, gives gifts to everyone, gives different gifts, not just one kind of gift. There's, there's knowledge and wisdom and faith and healing power and prophecy and there's speaking in tongues. Paul doesn't leave it out, but puts it at the end of the list. And it seems that, that Christians all through the ages have, have struggled with this. Churches have emerged that emphasize the more supernatural gifts of speaking in tongues and prophecy and healing. And then other churches have suppressed these gifts or ignored these gifts. And when a small group in the church rises up and moves in this direction of these more charismatic supernatural gifts that, well, pastors and churches have sometimes reacted negatively it made these people like they didn't, didn't fit in. They were out of place. I don't know if that's happened here, but I wouldn't be surprised. 
gifts of the Holy gifts of the Holy Spirit are so personal and intense. And if we've had one of these intense experiences of the Holy Spirit, we might think that, well, everybody should have the same thing that I've had. Are you with me, church? Has this been your experience here? Sometimes we who have been part of churches that emphasize the gifts of teaching and wisdom and, and knowledge just don't know what to do with these more ecstatic gifts of raising your hands, of shouting hallelujah, amen, speaking in tongues. And all of a sudden we're, we're very uncomfortable. Why? Because it's so different from our own experience with the Holy Spirit. And it just doesn't feel like the church that we're used to. But all of God's children got a place in the choir. The Scripture says, all these are the work of the one and the same Spirit, and the Spirit distributes them to each one just as the Spirit determines. I've visited charismatic churches. I've gone to charismatic prayer groups. Now, I have spent most of my years in in churches that emphasize the gifts of teaching and wisdom and knowledge. When I visited these more charismatic groups, I have gone from being freaked out by what I was hearing and seeing. I've gone from being freaked out to being mildly uncomfortable, to being curious, to being open. My prayer has been, oh God, I want whatever it is that you want me to experience of the Holy Spirit. That's what I want. I'm yours. Now, so far I haven't spoken in tongues or experienced any of these more ecstatic gifts. But I have been filled by the Holy Spirit. I have experienced the work of the Holy Spirit in my teaching and in my preaching and in my singing. Music has been a big part of the Holy Spirit being at work in me. Jesus said, The wind blows wherever it wills. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with the Spirit. Everyone feels the wind. The Spirit blows everywhere to everyone. In Acts chapter 2, Peter reminds the people of the prophecy from the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my Spirit in those days and they will prophesy. God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. All people means all, including you. Now, this, this openness to God is a, a big thing. It's okay to be uncomfortable. It's okay to freak out a little. Maybe secretly you hope that whatever gift of the Holy Spirit, you get it, you won't lose control ever. And it's okay if that's where you are. But maybe the next step for you is to just trust God. And trust and accept that there are a variety of gifts of the Holy Spirit that that the Holy Spirit has in mind for you, that God gives to all people, and we can honor that. Today's Scripture says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. This is key. A good test for any gift of the Holy Spirit is to see if it measures up to this standard. Is it for the common good? Does this gift help to bring unity or does it bring division? Does this gift bring, bring growth and greater faith to others? Or does it lead to people discounting other people's faith 
and deciding that one manifestation of the Spirit is better than another. No matter what gift of the Holy Spirit that has come our way, we are here to build each other up, to help each other grow in faith, to encourage one another in our walk with Jesus, to inspire and support each other, and to cheer each other on. Now, what if you feel like you've never received a gift of the Holy Spirit? You have faith in Jesus, you gave your life to Him, but you never felt like you had that, that gift of the Holy Spirit or that experience of the Holy Spirit. Well, part of me wants to tell you that maybe you have received a gift of the Holy Spirit and you just haven't realized it. Remember what the Scripture says. There are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And throughout the New Testament, there are several lists of gifts of the Holy Spirit that, that even include things like teaching and administration and helping and serving and music and artistry. The Holy Spirit even works in our natural gifts and skills that we've developed over, over the years. The Holy Spirit works in the, the mundane things we do to clean and serve and take care of others. The Spirit blows where it wills. The Spirit can't be controlled or limited to one set of gifts listed in the Bible. But, another part of me is saying, if you feel like you've never received a gift of the Holy Spirit, it's okay. It's okay to still be waiting and to be curious and open to what the Spirit God has for you. Now, don't give up. Stay open. Stay curious. And maybe when you least expect it, the Spirit will blow your way and you will feel it and receive it. And you'll know this is, this is it. This is what I've been waiting for. In the meantime... In the body of Christ, in the church, together as one, we receive, we all together receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. One sings and we all sing. One prays and we all pray. One preaches and teaches and we all receive the teaching. One is in the depths of despair and all our hearts are broken. One is rejoicing, and we are all filled with joy. Every gift becomes all our gifts. Every speck of faith, the size, the size of Higgs boson, the size of a mustard seed becomes all our faith. Our diversity, our differences become our unity. Different gifts, one spirit one body, all spiritually and scientifically connected together, all drawn into the body of Christ. All creatures got a place in the choir. We are one in the Spirit. Amen. Please join in singing hymn 420, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
Please be seated. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, snow, ice, a pandemic, none of it keeps us from you or you from us. We love to gather in this beautiful place with Christian friends, followers of Jesus. But when we can't gather, you come to us wherever we are, and we are grateful. Sometimes we fight with the technology, sometimes the technology is a distraction, sometimes it's our enemy, and sometimes it's our friend. And we thank you for all the means we have available to share the good news. And we thank you that you reach across the generations through the power of the Holy Spirit to send your love and grace and forgiveness to wash away our sins, to give us new life and resurrection hope that through putting our trust in you, we have the victory over sin and death. You meet us in our failures. You heal our scars. You give us each other to bear our sins together, to rise above all the temptations and distractions and evil that get in the way and try to tear us down. You are here with us to make us strong, to make us courageous, to inspire us, to stand up for justice, not to be silent, but to do something that, for those who are disadvantaged, vulnerable, mistreated. We pray for that kind of courage right now and that kind of fire to do what we can right where we are. We thank you, Lord, for sending us the Holy Spirit, for your generosity, that you give us gifts of the Holy Spirit for the common good. We pray that we will be open to receive all that you have to offer us, that you will help us to set aside our skepticism, our resistance to give up control. We pray that you will lead in our hearts and in this congregation to receive and use the gifts you give us and skills you awaken in us to serve in your name. Help First Church to be a loving force in this community and beyond. We pray for those who are ill. We pray for all those who are isolated at home. We pray for healing, and we thank you for the healing that we're aware of in some, some of our loved ones and friends. We lift up those in our hearts today who need your healing power, who need your grace and forgiveness, who need the assurance they are not alone, that you are right there with them. So we pause now in silence as we lift up the names on our hearts today. We pray for that assurance as well, that you are with us always. These prayers and all the prayers on our hearts, we lift up to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able for the closing hymn 421, Make Me a Captive, Lord. Make me a captive, Lord, and then I shall be free. Force me to render up my sword, and I shall conquer me. I think in life some
Lord is weak and poor until it master finds it has no spring of action sure it varies with the wind it cannot freely move on thou hast wrought it My power is faint and slow Till I have learned to serve It lacks thought needed fire to glow It lacks the breeze to nerve It cannot drive the world Until itself be drowned It's black and unfurled when thou shalt breathe from heaven. My will is not my own till thou hast made it thine. If it would reach a monarch's throne, it must its crown resign. It only stands on May the grace of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the love of Christ be at work in you to bring those gifts, to allow those gifts to shine in you, to make all the difference in the world for the kingdom of God. In his name we pray. Amen.